everyone. Okay, good morning everyone and good evening Philippines, good afternoon Middle East. <clears throat> Welcome to another session of free lecture ng ating mga guest speakers from different um, review centers in the Philippines. Okay, uh, my name is Jeffrey and for those who are watching on Facebook, please like our page and send us direct message and then you can tag your friends. And I would like to say hi to all the Zoom participants who are 32. So make sure, guys, please interact. Ayaw ni Miss Den. Ay ayaw ko din lalo na nanonood lang kayo. <laughs> Pero magsalita ng wala kayong reaction. Okay? And then, ayun. Hi to all my co-admins. Okay. So let's bring back Miss Den. Miss Den, hi. Hello everyone. Good evening. Oh Good God, afternoon. And Good morning. Bakit naman kami pinormahan ng ganyan? Nagmaka. Nagpapanik <laughs> <laughs> ako, sir. Wait lang. Kasi naglo-loading lahat ng screen ko. So, nagpapanik ko kayan tuloy. Sayang. Hello But, everybody. <laughs> okay. Uh, Miss Den, okay. Please explain bakit ganyan po ang aura nyo ngayong oh, gabi. Oo. So, yung aura natin. Kaling pa kayong party or pupunta kayo ng party? Wala. Ano. I, Ay, wala I came lang. from ano uh, task. Ta, okay. Sabi ko nga, nag-marinate lang po ako ng ulam. So, para sa ulam. Ganito po ako mag-marinate ng ulam. Okay. In heels pa yan. So, para ano, happy-happy tayo. Kasi sometimes, if you're, ano, if you're already troubled with something o kaya you're not feeling well, diba? at least do the part. Look good, di ba? Para at least yeah. mag-a-attract ka na lang ng positivity just in case. Uh, Hopefully yeah, actually, pala. Hopefully. Yeah. Sometimes it shows your personality. Yes. Yung, the way you dress. Okay. So guys, if you're watching, um, please type in your profession and your current location now. <laughs> okay. Yes. So this um, Miss Den knows how to approach you because yes. nine point zero nine or they have you know programs for local and international students. Okay. Yeah. So let's read. Um, Daki UAE. So okay, so we have somebody people. from UAE, and then we have uh, yeah, um, Aljun from KSA, si Super Nurse ng Tagig, Mikael on Nifro, tama ba? Para na si ano, PBB, <laughs> ang Super Nurse ng Tagig. Okay. Oo, tingnan natin. And then, I'd like to greet everyone. Yan si Miss Jobel, Virginia, Escarlan, Charmaine. Ayan, she is a nurse also from the Philippines. We have a medical technologist, Sharon Valenciano, um, from the Sultanate of Oman. O, taray, di ba? Okay, Miss so, Den, I will give you the floor. Okay. okay. I will give the speaker and the camera and you can close the live because... I have a flight today. <laughs> thank you okay, so much. Thank you so much. Take care, sir. Guys, please make this interactive. Okay. I remind you. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, let me just check with you guys if ever you can hear me clearly. Because I am having trouble with my screen right now. I cannot see anything. Everything is loading. Clear naman, Sir Richmond. And then Aljun also clear naman din. So I'm just trying to download my files though. Kasi I'm using the cloud. So, But first off, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Den Solis. I am affiliated with 9.09er. Um, IELTS Review and Tutorial Center. So I'm sure that all of you already have an idea or um, you've already had an experience with how 9.09er teaches you when it comes to your English proficiency exams. So for today, we will be focusing our discussion on listening. Um, and then we'll be doing listening lecture series. But I Uh, I tried to pick one of the easiest, yung note completion and form completion. Why one of the easiest? Kasi for the listening, um, yung note completion, the note completion and the form completion type of task is, um, yun nga, it's the easiest and it's found in task uh, or part one 
or sometimes in part two of your listening test. So the benefit of you acing this part of the listening test is that you have assured points already. Um, for you guys who have an idea already of the listening test, how many points are there again in the listening test? How many points ang meron sa listening test? So let's see. Um, I'm trying to look at the chat box on Zoom. So 40 points. Very good. So meron hindi sure. Si Al John is, I see no ba yung hindi sure. Si Sir Richmond is not sure. Yes, it is indeed 40 points. And then for the 40 points, usually each uh, part for the listening test, you have four parts. And usually they are, these parts have a total of 10. So if, for example, you scored high in your part one and your part two, because definitely those are the two easiest ones, they assured na kayo, di ba? So 20 plus points na yan. Um, just in case, or mga more than 15 points. Um, let me know, so 40 total points. How about yung score, the target score that you have for listening? Do you have an idea already? For those who are not yet taking, who haven't taken the exam yet, do you have an idea of your target score? Yan. Are you targeting for a band 7, a band 6.5 or higher, band uh, 7 and up? Or who is brave enough to say na ang target score niya ay um, 9.0? Sino? So, Jobel's target score is 6.5 overall. Daki is 6.5, at least 6.5. Si Mikael Onafrio. Ayan. So, for me... Quite honestly, for listening, I targeted 9.0 <laughs> for myself. Ko, that's the easiest part. So I would want to get a 9.0. And I did. I did score a 9.0 for listening. And thank God. Thank you also for Niner um, who shared experiences with me and uh, helpful techniques. Somebody's raising their hand. Let me just check the participants. Hello, Kitty is raising. i sorry. I lowered the hand. Eh. Uh, hello, Kitty from Zoom is raising her hand. Do you have any questions? Meron pa. So wait lang, guys. Ha? I'm downloading the file. Huh. Okay. Let me just open it here. What is wrong? Just a minute. Ah, you accidentally pressed. It's okay. It's okay. Um, I'm entertaining questions because I like our lecture to be as interactive as possible. So along the way, I would be stopping to ask questions from you and, and, and hopefully uh, you will be also answering. So if ever you do have questions, um, any moment, at any point during our lecture, I encourage you to um, type them in the chat box. I'm both accessing the chat box um, here on Zoom and then the Facebook Live chat box as well. Okay. Uh, I'm just having trouble with my Google Drive though. Uh, okay, there you go. Here. So now let me share my screen. Finally, after all the commotion. <laughs> okay, so there you go. Here is our focus, listening. Focus on notes. Um, or form completion. So first off, um, we have actually a joint promo in partnership with IDP right now. So this is exclusive um, for those who are living in the Philippines. If you know someone who is living in the Philippines and um, is planning to take the exam up until June 30, you can um, 
send a message to them and you can tell them that um, 9.09 has a partnership with IDP. All you need to do or all they need to do is to just register using this QR code and then just indicate their referral partner as 9.09er, IELTS Review, and Tutorial Center. So very, very easy. Um, however, don't fret because those of you who are located in the Middle East, we actually have books for you. Those are available um, in Amazon. Later, I will show you a copy of the books. Okay, so ito. So these are the copies of the books that are available on Shopee. Um, but as of the moment, only this. Uh, at I think itong part na to. Yan. So, IELTS Writing Guide, Speaking Guide. This one, the grammar book. The OET books, only these are available um, on Amazon. But all the rest, under ano na siya. Um, we've, we are currently processing the documents for the other books. Okay? So, you can tell your friends about our products, all of which for the purpose of helping um, our kababayans also because all books are written by Filipinos and written for Filipinos as well. Okay, there you go. Oh. So this one is the newly um, published book, UK, Ireland, USA Starter Pack. Okay, so there you go. Now for the listening overview, I asked you the question a while ago about the total number of questions that we have for the listening. Somebody mentioned or you guys mentioned that we have a total of 40 questions. You are correct. The 40 questions usually are equally divided into four parts. But there are some instances that some parts have 11 questions and so usually lang equally divided sila. So 10 points each part. And usually also, the parts are according to yung difficulty, niya, difficulty level increases. So part one is the easiest, part four is the most difficult. Okay? So in terms of the duration, um, as you can see here, if you're going to take paper-based, you, you're going to have 30 minutes roughly for the audio. Same if you're going to have computer-delivered test or CDT. However, the only difference between um, paper-delivered and computer-delivered, sa paper, you have 10 minutes to transfer your answer because you will also be given an answer sheet. Later, I'll show you um, how the answer sheet looks like. However, if you're going to take computer delivered, you need to, ha to have fast hands. Okay, so you need to also, you, you also need to multitask as well because um, after the um, audio is played, after the 30 minute audio is played, you will only be given two minutes to review all parts. But, but don't worry because all throughout um, the parts or all throughout the sections, you will be given, say, 20 to 30 seconds so that you can review your answers as well. Okay, so this, I think the 10 minutes and the 20 minutes, the two minutes afterwards would be um, essential, especially if you're checking for grammar, the spellings, and if you're checking if every answer uh, or if, if every question um, is answered also, okay? Materials. Now, let's look at the materials for paper. You will be given a questionnaire booklet wherein you can use um, that booklet as your scratch paper also. So you can encircle um, keywords. You can underline as well. Um, you also will be given an answer sheet. Now, generally for paper-based test takers, you will have just a speaker because... Um, the look of, uh, I mean, the um, the facility is just one room and then all of the test takers are there and then there would be a loudspeaker or probably, ayun, so it would be played using a speaker. So not unlike for the computer delivered test wherein you will be assigned one seat. So you'll be given one unit for your computer and then um, each unit or each section, each part, um, has um, a headset and, of course, your computer, your screen. You have your keyboard there also. And you will be given a scratch paper as well. So no, no need to worry about the scratch paper, whether paper-based or computer-delivered. There'll be a scratch paper present. Um, now, the, only, the other difference is that there are certain... Um, there are certain features and online suites that are available for your computer delivered test, which are not available for um, paper. So if you're deciding if paper or computer delivered test, I suggest that you um, look up for the sample computer delivered test and find out if that is the 
um, better option for you or if you'd rather prefer the paper delivered test. There are some who chose who choose paper delivered um, and there are some like me, I prefer the computer delivered because I type fast and I cannot write that much. Okay, so there you go. Um, yun. So let me repeat again, you have to write your final answers on the answer sheet, whether um, whether you've written it on your scratch paper, but if you haven't transferred your answers in the answer sheet, it will not be considered as correct. Okay, and there you go. The recording is only played once. So you really have to put your full attention in the 30 minutes that the audio is playing. Okay. So that's enough for the overview. So this one is how your paper, um, your answer sheet would look like for your paper delivery test. So this is, uh, you'd write your name here, your center number, and so and so. Question numbers from 1 up until 40. And then this is just um, a zoomed in part. Wherein, for your listening test, you have to take note that you are writing your answer on the listening portion of your answer sheet. Because on the other side, it looks almost the same as this. But the only difference is for reading, um, what is written here is reading, 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 reading. But for listening, you can see listening, 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 listening. Okay? So I know it's um, a tiny reminder, but this counts and this matters because there there are some instances where in students tend to make mistakes because they write um, their listening answers on the part that is intended for the reading, only to realize later on that the reading part was the one that they've written their answer to. So there you go. Okay. Now, as to the um, number numbering, it's also very important for you to know how um, the orientation is. The numbers are written number one at the left, on the left uh, portion, left column, and then up to number 20 going down. And then, of course, for number 21, this will be um, right beside number 21. And from 21 to 40, you will have to answer going down again. So you have to check also this one because there are some instances, some students, more common mistakes, they write, they answer like this. So it's not correct, huh? it's not correct to do that. So that is wrong. So you have to be familiar with these ones, okay? We suggest that you write all capital letters because um, your the legibility of your answer matters because it's also being checked. The spelling, the grammar is also checked um, for the reading answers. Corrections are accepted. Now, my question for you guys is, how are you supposed to answer the questions? Uh, or how are you supposed to give corrections for your answers? How are you supposed to give corrections? Yeah, so let's look at your answers. Draw a line. Thank you so much, Jabel. You're correct. Aljon Yanos, you're also correct. You are supposed to actually draw a line um, here or you just strike through. Okay. Those who are checking your answer sheet, they, they are humans. Okay. So they know if, for example, you've written um, a line above the wrong answer. So they would not be considering that. So, but instead they would be considering the answer that is um, that doesn't have a line um, through it. Okay. Also, something that is very important, please take note, guys, that you have to write answers on all the questions. Okay. So you have to write answers on all the questions because what if, what if your guess is correct? So sayang yung one point, diba? Sayang din yung one point na yun. Okay. And then um, you have to make sure lang that everything has an answer. For paper-based, it's easy because you can check the numbers. For computer-delivered, you can easily see it on your screen because there are certain notations that would indicate that there is an answer for that number. Or um, for those numbers that don't have an answer yet, it would also be, um, it would also reflect on the navigation pane at the bottom. Okay. So there you go. Now for the listening, so as I've mentioned, you, were, you will be having four parts for this one. In terms of context, part one and part two, the easy parts usually um, 
are tackling social context. So probably it's a conversation between um, between a client and a hotel um, specialist or a concierge of a hotel. If, for example, the client would like to reserve a room or say, for example, it's, a, it's an interview between um, an applicant and then... Um, Uh, a manpower agent or let's say a human resource um, person or um, staff of a company. So these are the ki kinds of contexts that you can um, hear on part one and on part two. This just varies according to the speakers. For part one, mostly it's a dialogue. For part two, it's a monologue. So only one person is talking here and here since it's a dialogue. Two people are talking. So you can easily Um, identify um, the voices because there are shifts in their voices as well. So that's why for me, um, part one is the easiest because you can identify um, which is speaker number one and which is speaker number two. All right. So for part three and part four, mostly the setting or the context for the materials that you can hear the in the recording are either professional context, it's a work context, or maybe um, something from school. So probably for part three, since it, it's a dialogue, um, other than two people talking, it's also possible for you to hear three persons talking or three individuals talking. For example, um, part three might be... Um, a conversation of, let's say, a lecturer and then two students. Two students are um, seeking help with the lecturer or the, advi the thesis advisor with regard to how they're going to present their thesis. So it might be like that. Or it is also possible that um, presentation of uh, thesis or what else. Um, questions about um, group mates can also be um, or discussions among group mates regarding a project can also be part of your recording for part three. Now for part four, it's a monologue. This, for me, this is the most difficult because only one person is talking. Only one person is talking about topic the, about a topic that is rather more difficult than the first one. Okay, so more academic in nature. Um, and then for part uh, four, usually since it's a monologue, it will not have breaks in between. Not unlike for part one and part two, the 10 questions that you have here, the 10 questions you have here, and the 10 questions that you have here, there might be breaks in between the 10 questions. So probably for the first Um, five questions, uh, there will be the first part uh, of part one or the first half of part one. And then for this one, for questions 11 to 16, and then there would be a break in between and uh, questions for or the audio or the recording for um, questions number 16 to 20 will continue. So same goes for this one, um, 31, oh, sorry, 21 to 25, and then probably 26 to 30 would be the next half of part three. But for part four, you have to be really focused because from question number 31 up until question number 40, it will be a monologue. You will be hearing only one voice. So um, it's quite challenging to check on um, to check on the differences or to identify which part is the clue for question number this, question number 35 or 36 and so on. But that's for another matter or that's for another discussion. T today, we will be focusing instead on um, we'll be focusing instead on form or note completion, which appears in part one or part two. Okay, so part one or part two. Okay, now for this one, for those of you who haven't seen yet what a question or what a form looks like, This is how it looks like. <laughs> yeah, and so you have here yeah, the part and then you have here instructions and then also the word count, okay? So the instructions, complete the notes below, write no more than two words or a num and or a number for each answer. So in all types of listening questions, as well as reading questions, as well as um, for the writing, of course, there would be instructions. Okay, so just focusing on listening in the instructions portion, you would find the word count. 
Um, I've highlighted it here. It says no more than two words and or a number. So one skill that you should need to develop is to familiarize yourself on what counts as one word in listening. Um, both for listening and reading, they have the same um, methods on how to count words. So for example, if I have here... Hmm, for example, I, I have here... Oops, can you see my, can you see the words? Wait, let me just adjust. Yeah. For example, this word. Help me identify. Yeah. Okay, so for these, for the words that I've typed, $24, bookshelves, September 13. The instruction says, write no more than two words and or a number. So which among the words could can count as a correct answer, a possible correct answer, given that the consideration is no more than two words and or a number? Which among the options? Is twenty four dollars is twenty four dollars a possible answer for no more than two words and or a number? How about bookshelves? Is it a possible answer? How about September thirteen? Is it a possible correct answer? September thirteen. Okay, for those who said September thirteen, this is actually correct. Yeah, that's actually correct. Although there is a number, which is number 13, and there is a word, which is the month September, it says no more than two words and or a number. In terms of the word count, how many words are allowed? Yun, very good. How many words are allowed? You're allowed to have two words. Very good. Two words. Are you allowed to have one word? Answers for this one. For example, let me add the term. Let's see. Is library a possible correct answer? Yes. Very good, guys. So you can have one word as a correct answer for this one. You can also have two words as a possible correct answer for this one. You could also have just this one, $24. So the unit um, as well as the number is also considered as one word answer. But for example... I've written here, uh, let's say, okay, so given that I have another answer here. How about 24th of September? Yeah, 24th of September. Not allowed. Yes, very good. It's not allowed. This one is not allowed. But okay, so this one is not allowed. So better settle for the words that are sure. Yes, correct. Est Ivy. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing your name correctly from Facebook. Thank you so much. Instead of writing 24th September, you can just simply say 24th September or um, you can write 
September 24, probably, right? So this one is safer. September 24 can be can be done also. Great. Good job. What if, for example, um, the answer is supposed to be, or what you heard is twice a week? Twice a week. <laughs> twice a week. For example, this is what you've heard. Um, how are you going to adjust the word count so that it can be, um, let's say the question is, how often do you need to visit the doctor? If, for example, the instruction says, write no more than two words and or a number, how, how are you going to write it? So question, how often? For example, that is the question. And then this is what you heard in the recording. Very good. Very good, Janice Samora, Ashri, Usop, Karen, Anne. Good job, guys. So you're supposed to write your possible answer for this would be twice weekly. There. Why is two weeks wrong? Why is two weeks wrong? What is the question? For example, you've written here two weeks or two weeks. Why is this wrong? Very good. The, the question is about frequency. How often? When your answer is two weeks, it might be a different question. Probably you're asking how long um, will you be visiting? You'll, you'll be visiting for two weeks or you'll be staying there for two weeks. So that's not a, an answer that you're supposed to, to write, correct? So very good, correct, Fatima. Thank you. Yes, Steve de la Calzada Magno. It depends on the question. So the portion that I, I told you a while ago, wherein you're given 10 minutes to transfer your answers or you're given two minutes to review or to check on your answers, that's the part wherein you're going to consider the question and if your answer is answering the question or is it answering a different kind of question, an imaginary question perhaps. For this case, yung two weeks, imaginary question is <laughs> Sagot ninyo dyan. That is wrong. Okay? So, got it po. Any more questions? Yeah, three words already. Pag twice a week. Okay. Thank you. So, there you go. So, word count. So, please write down for those who are joining us in tonight's session. Please write down also um, learning how to count words because most of those I've checked for the sessions or some sessions for listening, they commit mistakes when it comes to the word count. Sayang, sayang siya. So, you, yung points or the errors that you will be committing here, if it's because of the word count, um, sayang yung mga points na yun. Okay? So there you go. So this is how it looks like, as I've mentioned. And apart from the instructions and the word count, it would also have the this information. So phrases, keywords. Um, it will. It can be lists. It call. It could also contain headings or subheadings. So for this case, your heading is it's a lost property form. So if, for example, you've seen here, um, that. Um, the heading is lost property form. Oh, okay. So probably uh, the audio or the recording that would be played afterwards would be talking about something that is that um, was lost by Yvonne. Because here, oh, diba? there are certain details that are filled up already in this part. So it gives you a clue, yung name, contact details, the address, yung mga portions na yan. These are clues that can help you out to anticipate later on um, what will be the correct the correct answer for the blank portions? Okay. 
So, yun. Now, how are we supposed to answer yung mga gantong questions? How? Um, I just summed it up in four simple steps. First off, you have to read the instructions because the instructions would, diba? yung instructions would bear yung word count as we've discussed a while ago. Um, read the instructions and follow yung, yung word count. Um, but I think if, for example, you're fast enough or um, you've been uh, practicing well, Um, and you got the hang of translating already this one, okay na siya. If yung answer mo, instant mo na siya na isusulat. For example, in my example a while ago, um, it, the, your audio says, uh, you will be visiting um, the doctor twice a week. So instead of typing twice a week or instead of writing twice a week, you've just written in your um, answer key, for example, yung twice uh, twice weekly. So, instant na, automatic na siya nagta-translate. It's okay. It's okay. But, for example, you're not yet, um, you don't have that habit yet or you don't have that skill yet, please write down whatever it is that you heard first. Yung, kung ano muna yung una ninyong narinig. Because, why, um, why would there be, an, the why is it important to write down what it, whatever you heard first? rather than translating, let's say, in grammar or let's say, yung word count, why? Why do you need to write down whatever you heard first? Write down muna whatever you heard. Now, my question for you guys is... Makakali- Ma- Mike, Mikael, Mikael, Michael said makakalimutan to be sure with the answers what else let's wait for our friends from facebook why do you need to write down um what you heard first yung time for your backup very good claire diag for your backup para hindi mo rin makalimutan and good job maria from zoom you can only hear the recording once. Kasi for example, you would, you're trying to adjust, ito bang twice a week? Does it belong to, ano, um, does it satisfy yung two word and or a number or hindi? Ano kaya yung two word and or a number that means twice a week? While you are thinking that, three seconds yun, guys, three seconds. Nasa three, three or four seconds na yun, the audio is continually playing. So what if, for example, the answer for the next number is already uh, mentioned nakalimutan nyo na. I mean, hindi siya nakalimutan. You did not get that answer. So, sayang yung part na yon. So, always, always get muna yung answer ninyo. Um, whatever you heard first. Okay? And then, i-translate nyo na lang siya soon after if you're given time. Okay? I'm pretty sure naman that dun sa two minutes na time, it would be more than enough for you to translate or to consider the word count, the grammar, and so on. Okay? Tama kayo. You might forget para pwede mo balikan. Yes. Yung Lorente Jimenez, Sweet Pearl, ay, yung cute ng name, Sweet Pearl. Ayan. So, you're correct. You can go back to what you've written dun sa answer sheet ninyo or dun sa scratch paper ninyo. You can go back to that. Pero yung audio, you cannot go back to that. And you cannot, by all means, you cannot request na, I didn't hear that po. Can you please play again? You cannot tell that to the examiner. Basta magpa-play lang siya. Okay? So, yun. Next, tama. Ivan also said to focus on the next question. Very good, guys. So, alam nyo pala bakit. Next for this one, what's happening? Okay, so ito na. So read the instructions. Tapos you have to identify your keywords. So in the identification of the keywords, I showed you guys this one, diba? So I've mentioned that there are some parts that are mentioned here. So yung, let's say the name, tapos contact details, yan. So, if you're going to take paper-based, you can encircle, you can underline um, yung mga keywords that you see. So, for example, ito, name. If you're writing the name, ako, okay lang sa akin. If, for example, it's just as short as this, I, I don't underline it anymore. Basta I know that for the first number, for the first question, I would be anticipating 
um, a surname because the first name was already mentioned. Okay? And then, for contact details, ayan, so contact details, possible answer for this one would be a number, di ba? So, you can predict. Um, for the address, so in the address, you know how the structure of an address is. There's a house number, there's a street name, after the street name, um, there is the name of the subdivision or the name of the town. For this case, very specific. So, blank subdivision. Okay? So, if for example, I heard the name Bronson already, I would be focusing, I would be putting my 100% um, focus already because I'm pretty sure that the name of the subdivision would come soon after. Okay? And then, for this one, value. So, if it says value, what are the possible answers if value siya? If it says here value, possible answers. The cost, very good. So if, for example, um, we're mentioning costs, what usually accompanies the cost? Yes, the price. So, of course, since we're mentioning price or cost, number yan, di ba? So, you're kind of expecting a number. And what else? If we're saying a value or cost, what else is very important for this one? Monetary, Harleen Apostol, good job. What else? What do you call this? Currency, very good, Jobel. The amount of money, LV, great. So, ha, very important also yung mga ganyan. I don't know how to write a pound sign. <laughs> or yung ganito, di ba? What do you call this? For those who are located in uh, Europe, Euro, yon The currency. So, expect already that the currency um, will be mentioned as well. Now, in terms of currency, since it's declared here, yung value niya, and you're looking for the value, but no unit is measured yet, or no unit is is given, are you supposed to write the currency? Let's say dollar siya. They're talking in dollars. Are you supposed to write that in your final answer? Yes, pwede. You can write. Um, as for me, it's safe to just write it. Although there are some instances wherein the um the note um or the form that you receive already has let's say the currency written if it has the currency written here there's no need for you to write any more this one if given na siya for example value in let's say like this naka parenthesis siya value in dollars yeah, so when you write the answer, you can just simply write here, let's say $20. You can just simply write it like that because in this portion, yung currency, the currency is already mentioned or it's already written. Okay? So if mentioned na, no need to write. Kasi understood na eh. It's already the form. It's already the questionnaire that is giving you na ito yung unit niya. This is the currency. Pero kung wala siya, if the currency is not present, kung wala siya, then you have to write it on your own. Ikaw magsusulat. Included siya sa answer. Did you get my point, guys? Okay. So, yun. That's basically um, what I want to say for the value. Very good. So, prediction of the answers, very important. It actually helps. Yeah. So, dito, if you're trying to check on the date, date siya, di ba? So, dito, it's quite confusing pag date. Uh, my trick is, since it's a form, common things that are asked for in the form are names, numbers, values, what else? Uh, sometimes these are also the types of recordings wherein somebody would spell out the answer. So ito yon mga ganitong types of questions. For the dates, um, I always go back to this. No more than two words and or a number. So what I write, para clue ko na lang din siya, di ba? Um, no more than two words and or a number. So ito yung month, tapos yung number. Month and number. So, yun lang. Para specific. Para alam ko na din. Okay? 
So there you go. So that's it. Prediction of the answers. Next, after you predict the answers because you've identified the keywords, you've highlighted or you've underlined them, that's the time that the audio will be playing. Itong part of identification of the keywords, um, you can actually do this um, if you're lucky na, that the question is part one. Let's say the note is na question number one up until number six. So you're lucky. Yung first part of your listening test, mahaba yung script nun. So this is the IELTS listening test. Tapos mayroon pa siyang mahabang na script. Uh, the whole time or the entire time that the script is mentioned, yung copyright under ganto ganto ganyan yan. So, may mga ganun, copyright. You don't need to listen to that. You don't need to listen to that. But make use of that crucial time for you to identify the keywords um, and get to know uh, the format of the questions, the numbers, and so and so. So that it's easier for you to anticipate later on because you're already familiar with the types of questions and the possible types of answers that will be given to you. Okay? If you notice, dito, yung reading instructions, identifying keywords, paisa-isa lang siya. That's only one step. It just so happened that for this part, yung listening, tatlo sila. So you'll be multitasking for this one kasi you will listen, you will take notes, and then you will answer. Diba? So ito na yung portion na yun, multitasking na. Um, that's why yung prediction of the answers, you did it before as you identified the keywords kasi as you predict the answers, you're going to anticipate now. Um, since we've mentioned na, ah, okay, yung value is, is a number and it has a currency. So you will anticipate in the recording if the word dollar was mentioned, yung currency was mentioned, the next number probably, probably ha, I'm saying probably, the next number is probably the correct answer. So yun siya. Because there are instances in IELTS listening wherein the recording is confusing you. So yun din, be careful on the distractors as well or the disruptors, okay? So again, just like in um, this one, in writing down your answer, please indicate what the answer is based on what you hear. So based on what you hear muna, and then you can go back to it later on. All right? So finally, yung last step natin, you can now check on the answers. And what are the considerations when you're going to check the answers? Consider the grammar, consider the spelling, um, consider the form of your answer. By form, I mean to say, um, yung the date, are you supposed to write 24th of September? Or you're just going to write September 24? Or um, yung unit of measure, are you still going to write the unit of measure? The currency, is, still, is it still needed or not anymore? So these are the things that you have to consider. Um, yung kaninang question, the example that I gave you a while ago, the question was how often, which denotes frequency. So you should not write the duration because it's different, okay? So those are the things that you have to take note dun sa checking your answers na portion, okay? Essential si checking your answers because again, small mistakes that we commit dito sa part na to um, would, be, uh, would not be helpful or would not might cause you crucial points, di ba? Okay, so we have exercises now. We will be doing exercises. Please prepare papers because we will have the exercises. Next. The first one would just be easy. And then the last one would be not so easy. Not so easy. Okay, so here you go. I wait. Let me just stop share because I haven't pressed yet yung ano. Share audio. But before that, can I know if you have any questions? Up to... As of this point, do you have any questions? Wala. Wala naman. No questions. Okay. Share audio na ako. Do 
please tell me, guys, if you can hear the audio well. Section 2. You will hear a man talking on the radio about a national... Okay, is that loud enough? Okay na, sige. Okay, I'm playing the audio once more. Yon, okay. Okay, so here is our listening practice. Section 2. You will hear a man talking on the radio about a National Arts Centre. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 16. Now listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 16. Hello and welcome to Focus on the Arts. I'm your host, Dave Green, and this is your very own local radio programme. Every Friday evening, we put the spotlight on different arts and culture facilities and look at the shows and events that are on offer in the coming week. And today, the focus is on the National Arts Centre. Now... If you don't already know it yourself, I'm sure you've all heard of it. It's famous throughout the world as one of the major venues for classical music. But did you know that it's actually much more than just a place to hear concerts? The centre itself is a huge complex that caters for a great range of arts. Under a single roof it houses concert rooms, theatres, cinemas, art galleries and a wonderful public library, as well as service facilities including three restaurants and a bookshop. So, at any one time, the choice of entertainment there is simply enormous. So, how did they manage to build such a big arts complex right in the heart of the city? Well, the area was completely destroyed by bombs during the war in 1940. So the opportunity was taken to create a cultural centre that would be what they called the city's gift to the nation. Of course, it took a while for such a big project to get started, but it was planned in the 60s, built in the 70s, and eventually opened to the public in 1983. Ever since then, it has proved to be a great success. It's not privately owned, like many art centres, but is still in public hands. It's run by the City Council. Both our National Symphony Orchestra and National Theatre Company were involved in the planning of the project, and they're now based there, giving regular performances every week. And as the centre is open 363 days of the year, there are plenty of performances to choose from. Before you hear the rest of the broadcast, you have some time to look at questions 17 to 20. Okay, there you go. I was looking at the screen. You cannot see number 16, no question. Actually, it has. Wait long, let me adjust. Ayun. So, number 16, okay lang. But, but it's okay. The number 16, ayun. So, number 16 question is the days per year for that one. So, no question. Ano na lang yan? Bonus. Bonus round. Sige, let me know, guys, what your answers are. Please type them in the chat box. Anong answer? What are your answers? Um, while you're typing, 
typing your answers, I would be answering the questions. Giselle Tagaka from Facebook said, in CDT or computer delivered, how should we write the answer? Can we also use capital letters? I suggest that you use capital letters also for computer delivered test, both in reading and in listening. For writing, do not use all caps, but observe uh, proper capitalization. Okay? So, yun lang. Listening and reading lang. So, yun yung first na ginawa ko when I sat in the table. I tried to check yung ano, uh, keyboard. Are all the keys working properly? Okay. Number 11 is classical music. Um, number 12 is bookshop. Okay, so bookshop. All right. So, yung answers natin. Uh, <laughs> may nahiya. Somebody shy. Ni daw niya na ko yung answers sa number 13. Okay. So, let's look. Something that could actually help you out in your listening is aside from aside from dito ha, aside from checking and comparing your answers sa answer key, try to find also the audio scripts. Um, for listening, ayan, may mga audio script like this, um, wherein you can go back dun sa audio itself. So if, for example, you're still a newbie or you're you don't get the hang, you don't have the hang of answering the questions yet, okay lang, okay lang to look at, um, to look at the transcripts. Actually, I suggest that one because, um, in here, as you look at the transcripts, you will identify the words that would actually lead to the answer for number 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. So ganun siya. What I did here is, ito yung transcript that you've heard a while ago. Ito yung um. Yeah, ito yung uh, transcript ng audio. So, I tried to do, or I, I tried to write in bold na yung mga clues. For example, yung heading na yan. So, the National Art Center. What else? Yung famous throughout the world. Um, itong part na to, well known for. Ito siya, yung famous, alright? Throughout the world. And then, saan siya famous? Classical music. So, that's the answer for number 11. Now, um, for this one, aside from itong well known for na keywords, consists of, so, ibig sabihin, it's an enumeration. So, enumerated words, ayan, concert rooms, theaters, public libraries, ganyan. So, you can anticipate this one. This one, I am encircling yung restaurants. Why? Because most likely, yung restaurant as well as yung public library, ito yung closest that you can hear. Um, so, just like in the script, diba? So, can you notice? Concert rooms, theaters, cinemas, art galleries, Wonderful. My wonderful lang si public library. But it's still the public library, ba? And the restaurant. So when I heard restaurants, automatic na focus na yung attention ko. Bookshop. Okay? Or there might be an instance also na it's not in order. It's also possible. So for example, yung number 11. Aside from number 11, I'm also looking or I'm also um, taking note about what the possible answer for num question number 12 might be. Kasi, yun, there are some um, nuances dun sa ibang audio, sa other audios. So, sometimes question number 12 might appear first or yun. Okay? So, for this one naman, yung bookshop is the correct answer. All right. Okay, so bookshop. Bookshop is a compound word but spelled as one. Spelled as one kasi si bookshop. Okay. Yung number 16, so some of you are saying wala, there, it's not included. So pabonus na lang natin yan. Books, bookshop such as bookstore, compound, compound noun sila but spelled as one. Okay, now these are the answers for number 13, 14, and 15. Yung number 16, ito yung answer natin. But since it wasn't shown, carry lang. Okay na. Sige. So ito, for number 12 na part, I actually, um, I during the first phase, diba, what was first mentioned? Itong isang buo na to. 
diba? So, in, throughout the entire audio, yung questions 11 to 16. And then, as I've mentioned a while ago, for this part, section 2 ito, or part 2, yung remaining three questions would be the latter part, or yung second half of the audio for section 2. So, yung that is the advantage if you are doing section 1, or part 1, part 2, and part 3. It's cut into half. So, it's easier for you to identify. And, um, if you remember a while ago, there was a portion, ito, wait lang ha. There was this portion of, hello and welcome to Focus the Arts. So, diba? so, there are still other things that are being mentioned dito sa part na to. So, that's good. That's good. Kasi you can use that time to identify the keywords from 11 to 16. Because anyway, um, you will be instructed as to which questions should you focus on first. So in here, it was identified 11 to 16. So you will be focusing on six questions first. Okay lang. Um, it's okay if you're focusing on six questions directly because as you can see, it's very short. The keywords are very short here. It's not like uh, complete sentences, not like that. Okay? So hindi siya confusing, not like the multiple choice sentences. Na you would have to understand, you'd have to comprehend, you would have to give meaning. So, hindi ganon. So, very easy lang siya. So, I recommend that you practice more on your notes. Uh, yan. Okay? And then next for this one, so, um, for the question number 13, did you get number 13? Did you guys get number 13? Who got number 13? Yes! Yay! Okay, so number 13, planned. It's, this one is quite um, confusing though because hindi, hindi pala confusing, tricky. It's tricky because the word is planned, diba? But for me, um, I think the strategy that you can use is again, go back to your keywords. Look at what was what is the word mentioned here? So center, you, you have to encircle it or underline. Um, and then ito, yung 60s, 1940, 1940s also. If 1940s was mentioned or even more so, if 1960s was mentioned, I would be listening well. I would be anticipating na, ah, the answer might be in the next uh, phrases or next um, sentences. True enough, it is. Diba? So yung 1960s dito, it was mentioned already. So tapos na, the answer was before 1960s but yung clue mo dun is yung 1940s dito. Nag 1940s na eh. So from 1940 onwards, I would be listening to this one also. Some of you might consider the city's gift to the nation as the correct answer. Pero when you look at your when you look at your um, note or your form, diba? 1960s, center was blank. The audience says, so the opportunity was taken to create a cultural center that would be what they call the city's gift to the nation. So it was a name. So it means to say that although it was considered, this was considered, yung city's gift to the nation was considered as like uh, parang an alternate name for the National Arts Center, it's not yet clear because yung 1960s was not yet mentioned. So there was a continuation to the 1940s na sentence. Of course, it took a while for such a big project to get started, okay? But it was planned in the 60s. So yung phrase na yun, although um, the answer was first mentioned, pero it's within the entire phrase, eh, but it was planned in the 1960s. So more or less, um, even though um, last, Na, or the 60s appeared later um, or the later part during the audio, yung plan, it's close to the 60s na phrase. So, magigets na din siya. Okay? So, there you go. And then, yung 1983, I hope you got 1983 also. So, in, for example, ito, this is a preposition. So, when you have a preposition in, typically, you are using or yung the... the um, word that will follow can be a year. 
So in the 1940s, just like in your writing task one, diba, if you're going to take academic, in 1940s, in 2010, in 2011, um, in 2010, so yung mga ganun, okay? So in, so you, have, you should anticipate that this might be a year, just like in this one, year siya. Also, what is important or what is crucial or significant here is it's presenting a historical background based on the subtopic that was mentioned. So may 1940s ka dito, 1960s. So ultimately dito, yung sa last part mo, it is also a, it's possible that it's a year based on the prediction and based on the clues that you have in the note. Okay? And then, uh, open to the public. And then in here, uh, based on the clue that you have, managed by. So, in reading, also in listening, you might not be hearing the exact words, but instead, you're hearing a paraphrased version of that or the synonyms. That's why you need to um, brush on with your uh, vocabularies. You need to improve your vocabulary so that you will realize or so that you will get to realize that this phrase is already the clue for the answer for this question. So managed by, you did not hear anything that is reflective of managed by, but instead you heard run by, run by the city council, okay? Uh, run by the city council, there you go. And then ito, ano na lang to, uh, bonus na lang, sorry guys, yung number 16, 363 days of the year. So, yan. Days per year. Days of the year. Okay. Open. The word open is also present. So, ito siya. Okay. So, there you go. Now, we will be having so far, this one is an easy kind of task. How did you get your answers? Or, at sino yung may mali? Si Angela. Ano yung mali ni Angela? Ah, okay. You had wrong answers. But it's okay. At least you get to realize what your answers, um, how you, or you get to realize why you made that mistake. Um, one important thing that I also practiced when I was reviewing for the IELTS was, um, I go beyond the answer key. As I've mentioned, it's important for you to realize why did you make this mistake? Why did I why did I answer this one and not the correct answer? So what was your um, mistake there? So you have to um, go in retrospect. You have to go back and know what your mistake is so that you would not be committing that um, over and over. Diba? So there's correction. There is learning um, from that mistake. Okay, that's how you learn dito. When I when I started reviewing my listening score, I only get siguro mga ano ba, 30. 30, but my target was 9.0, diba? And yung 9.0 40 yan, 40 out of 40. So I don't have uh I don't have any room for error. So that's what I set for myself. Dapat 40 ako. So, yun. Eh, dahil nagsa-30 nga lang ako, I worked hard up until I got mga 37 na, 36, 35. And then, luckily, nung exam na, it was just easy peasy. Um, but very crucial din yung ability ninyo to focus on the listening. For those who would be taking computer delivered, um, one advantage of that would be since you are given your own headsets, so it kind of um, it helps you lessen the distractions. Not unlike for computer, uh, not unlike for paper based. So, medyo for me personally lang ah, I just find it more distracting pag paper based. Okay, so yun. What else? Too fast yung iba. Yeah, too fast daw. Okay, ito. So this one is the form that you're going to answer. I will also be playing again. Um, I will be playing yung ating answer for this. I answer. I will be playing the recording for this. Just a minute. Okay na. You can see naman, guys. This one is 
quite it's more challenging than the other one because the first one had only um, six questions, but for this, you have 10 questions entirely for um, for the form, okay? So, I hope you're ready. I will be playing the audio for this one now, okay? So, you can take a screenshot of this. Take a screenshot so that you can use your probably your phones to underline or highlight the keywords also that would help you out. So, I'll be playing the audio now. IELTS 14. Tests 1 to 4. Published by Cambridge University Press and Uckles 2019. This recording is copyright. Test 1. You will hear a number of different recordings and you will have to answer questions on what you hear. There will be time for you to read the instructions and questions, and you will have a chance to check your work. All the recordings will be played once only. The test is in four sections. At the end of the test, you will be given ten minutes to transfer your answers to an answer sheet. Now turn to section one. Section 1. You will hear a woman reporting a theft to an officer in a police station. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 3. You will see that there is an example that has been done for you. On this occasion only, the conversation relating to this will be played first. Good morning. Uh, what can I do for you? I want to report a theft. I had some things stolen out of my bag yesterday. I'm sorry to hear that. Right, so I'll need to take a few details. Can I start with your name? Louise Taylor. The woman's name is Louise Taylor. So Taylor has been written in the space. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to three. Good morning. Uh, what can I do for you? I want to report a theft. I had some things stolen out of my bag yesterday. I'm sorry to hear that. Right, so I'll need to take a few details. Can I start with your name? Louise Taylor. Okay, thank you. And are you resident in the UK? No, I'm actually Canadian, though my mother was British. And your date of birth? December 14th, 1977. So you're just visiting this country? That's right. I come over most summers on business. I'm an interior designer, and I come over to buy old furniture, antiques, you know? There are some really lovely things around here, but you need to get out to the small towns. I've had a really good trip this year, until this happened. Okay. So you've been here quite a while? Yes. I'm here for two months. I go back next week. So, may I ask where you're staying now? Well, at present, I've got a place at Park Apartments that's on King Street. I was staying at the Riverside Apartments on the same street, but the apartment there was only available for six weeks, so I had to find another one. Okay. And the apartment number? Fifteen. Right. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 4 to 10.
Now listen and answer questions 4 to 10. Now, I need to take some details of the theft. So, you said you had some things stolen out of your bag? That's right. And were you actually carrying the bag when the theft took place? Yes. I really can't understand it. I had my backpack on, and I went into a supermarket to buy a few things, and when I opened it up, my wallet wasn't there. And what did your wallet have in it? Well, fortunately, I don't keep my credit cards in that wallet. I keep them with my passport in an inside compartment in my backpack, but there was quite a bit of cash there, about 250 pounds sterling, I should think. I withdrew 300 pounds from my account yesterday, but I did a bit of shopping, so I must have already spent about 50 pounds of that. Okay. At first I thought, oh, I must have left the wallet back in the apartment. But then I realized my phone had gone as well. It was only a week old, and that's when I realized I'd been robbed. Anyway, at least they didn't take the keys to my rental car. Yes. So you say the theft occurred yesterday? Yes. So that was September the 10th? And do you have any idea at all of where or when the things might possibly have been stolen? Well... At first, I couldn't believe it because the bag had been on my back ever since I left the apartment after lunch. It's just a small backpack, but I generally use it when I'm traveling because it seems safer than a handbag. Anyway, I met up with a friend, and we spent a couple of hours in the museum. But I do remember that as we were leaving there, at about four o'clock, a group of young boys ran up to us, and they were really crowding round us, and they were asking us what time it was. Then, all of a sudden, they ran off. Can you remember anything about them? The one who did most of the talking was wearing a T-shirt with a picture of something. Uh, let's see. A tiger. Right. Any idea of how old he might have been? Around 12 years old? And can you remember anything else about his appearance? Not much. He was quite thin. Color of hair? I do remember that. He was blonde. All the others were dark-haired. And any details of the others? Not really. They came and went so quickly. Right. So, what I'm going to do now is give you a crime reference number so you can contact your insurance company. So, this is 10 digits. 87954-82361. Thank you. So, should I contact the... That is the end of Section 1. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 2. Okay, so that's it, guys. How was it? If I would just ask you, is it a difficult? Ano ba? How would you place your um, practice test? Easy, average, difficult. Let's look. It's fine. Wow, I like it. It's easy. Yes, it is easy. It is easy. Easy. Sige, sabi nyo, easy. Yeah? So, tingnan natin. Carry lang yan. I like that spirit. You know how to gauge if it's easy or difficult? Easy daw. Anong easy? What made it easy for you? For those on Facebook. And for those um, logged in with us sa Zoom, what made it easy for you? 
Yon, very good Steve de la Steve de la Calzada Magno. Ang daldal ni Lola. Chikadora si Luis. Si Luis de Chikadora. Oo, Chikadora siya. Um and one thing also, I mentioned a while ago, 'di ba? You're lucky if yung notes na form is first part siya because there is a longer script um before the actual audio plays may mga instructions pa and then there are examples that would be given so may mga ganun kaya easy easy siya it's just that yon tama din correct also si Steve madami lang siyang traps there are a lot of traps later on i'll be showing you um yung mga the ano yun, the audio script uh, so that you can see ano ba yung mga traps na yon Okay. Yes, very easy kasi fill in the blanks. Easy to follow rin yung conversation. Pero may mga traps kasi you will see na parang meron siyang mga um, yung answers. Pwedeng is, ito na yung answer pero magsasabi siya ng another possible answer pa. So you would think, is it is this the correct answer or yung the first one that I've heard? So ganun siya. Okay. And for this one also, although 10 items, um, 10 items siya for the notes, um, it was divided into two parts. Again, so first part then yung one to three lang, di ba? Tapos yung four to six, you are given um, probably, I think you're given 20 seconds in between to review your answers. So yung first, first part na maraming chika-chika, yung parang you will hear a conversation between um, ano yun, between a lady and a police station at Chuchuchu. May mga ganun, di ba? So dun sa dami ng um, chika-chika na yan, so you have to identify the keywords already. Um, if, for example, it says uh, first three questions or numbers one to three, if you've identified the keywords from number three already and you still have ample time, wala pang nagsispeak, there is no recording yet that is playing about this one, you can continue on by identify, con you can continue on with identifying the other keywords as well. So no problem with that. Para dun sa next part, if you're given the time already, for um, to review yung answers niyo for part ay uh, yung answers to review yung questions for question number 4 up until question 10 so probably nandito na kayo kasi this portion this is quite text heavy eh, de ba so it's text heavy not unlike this portion very easy lang siya yung nasa baba yung text heavy okay pinagpag ayan pinagcompute pa kayo oo nga sino yung nagcompute Sino yung nag-compute? Easy lang siya, pero yun nga. You have to get yung mga exact words that would um, not make you doubt the answer. Magko-compute nga lang. Sino nag-compute? <laughs> okay, there you go. So let's proceed with this one. Okay. So ito na, I've identified the keywords already dito. So those uh, that are highlighted are the keywords, yeah, nationality, and then you have their uh, 14, December, ganyan. So usually the dates, I highlight them. Why do I highlight the dates? Because, um, remember, di ba, yung 14 December, or yung December 14th and 14th December, these are all um, one words. When I go back to the question, one word and or a number. So when it comes to the dates, one word and or a number lang siya, di ba? When it comes to the dates, I highlight ano ba yung one word and or a number. So that if, for example, one of the questions here would be would be asking for a date, I would be following what is written here already. Yung date of birth dito, the format is 14 December 1977. So if, for example, I would be asked of a date, kasi dito, date of theft. So you would be asked for a date again. I would be following this format. Uh, I would be following na yung day muna, the day first, and then the month, and then the year. But, but, again, I would have to consider yung count niya. I would have to consider yung required na word count, which is one word and or a number. Okay? So, yun. First, the answer is Canadian. So, ano yung clue natin? It's asking for the nationality. When you look at the transcript, the, the officer answered, um, are you a resident in the UK? So, resident in the UK. Tapos, the answer is no. Uh, automatic. It's not British. If you're asking for the nationality, hindi siya British. So, parang ano. Uh, what are the other nationalities possible? Uh, yan. Sinabi na naman niya eh. Very, in, very instantaneously. Oh, I'm actually Canadian. 
Tapos ito yung sinasabi, who's that? Steve said, daming traps. So ito yung trap number one, though my mother was British. So if you're not actually focusing attention, yung though na to, you might not get this. You might not get this. ba? Diba? So probably, kung nawala ka sa attention mo, my mother was British, or parang baka yung focus mo, iba na siya, tapos ang narinig mo na lang yung British, you might be writing British instead of Canadian. So this one is wrong. Okay? Kaya yung focus nyo, very important pa rin talaga. Okay? Next for this one would be, sa question number two, the answer, just answered furniture. Correct. So did you get furniture, guys? Did you get furniture? Yeah, and furniture is correct. So it's asking about yung reason for visit. And then it says, uh, that's right, I come over most summers on business. So yun, business was mentioned. It's also found on the form. And then yung interior designer, carry lang, okay. Um, I come over to. So if you have, if you have the preposition to, it's, it refers to saan? Sa reason or yung purpose. So to, by, what? Old furniture. But if, for example, you've identified yung keywords ninyo here na buy antique. So, ano ba yung mga possible na antique? Furniture, silverware. So, yun yung mga possible. But most likely, it's an, it's furniture. It's furniture. So, pwede nyo siyang i-guess. Okay? Old furniture. Yes, it's also correct. Old furniture is also correct. Um, ay, sorry. Wait lang. I'd have to double check. Wait, ha? Yung keyword natin, one word and or a number. So, pag old furniture, correct or not correct? Ayun, thank you, Angela Tayamora. Correct. So, that's not correct. Kapag old furniture yung answer, wrong na yun. Even if it has the word furniture, but if you've written old also, you're not following instructions kasi the instruction says one word and or a number lang. If the instruction says two words um, or not more than two words and or a number, pwede yung old furniture. But for this case, furniture is the only answer acceptable or is the only acceptable answer. Somebody said dito, si pain not butter. Peanut butter? Bright child. Ayun. So, sabi niya dito, um, it's actually interior designer siya. So, if um, the purpose is to buy antique, as an interior designer, what do interior designers usually buy? Yes, furniture. Very good. So, yun yung antique kasi, di ba? Sometimes you also get antique uh, jewelry. So, may mga ganun din. Kaya lang yung job niya kasi, it's interior designer. So, if it's a jeweler, the, the occupation is a jeweler, pwede yung antique jewelry. Pwede yun. Pero interior designer siya. So, furniture is the correct answer. If you're basing it on... Uh, if you're basing it on prediction, okay? Based on the clues that you have dun sa form. Okay, what else? So let's move naman dun sa next na portion natin. So it says here, number three. Somebody said yung answer niya is, um, yung answer niya is King Street. Are you supposed to write King Street there? So ito yung answer niya eh. So, if you're going to listen to the audio or if you're going to listen to the recording, so, I I highlighted or I changed two months here kasi yun yung clue mo. Um, when you are going to anticipate answers, consider yung first two. That's why pala in this portion, so if you notice, yung part one, um, you have to look at question number one and question number two. Yung possible. Question, look at question number one and question number two. And if you're going to anticipate the answer for number question number two, also consider yung um, question number three. Ano ba yung possible answer for question number three? Because if you hear the answer for question number three, it means to say, forget mo na si question number two kasi you, na-skip mo na yung answer na yun. So proceed ka na with number four. Most likely, it's, it's like that. So, Okay. So next, sabi, where you are staying. So current address. Ayan, may now kasi dito. So it refers to something that is current. Now. Okay? So now, very clear yun. Ah. Saka dito din, very clear. Current. 
Chikadora si ate. O, oh, kita nyo. Can you see the difference? Sa, ang iksi lang. The questions of the officer, very short lang, di ba? Direct questions. Pero chikadora si ate. Well, at present, I've got a place at Park Apartment. So, Park is the answer for number three. That's on King's Street. So, hindi siya tinatanong if it's the street. So, it's supposed to be Park Apartments. I was staying at the Riverside Apartments. So again, your focus is very important here because what if itong portion na to, when, the, when Luis answered yung Park Apartments, you were focusing on question number two. Iniisip mo, tama ba yung furniture or not? And nasabi na niya yung Park Apartments. And then, um, yung was staying at Riverside Apartments was mentioned. Probably yung answer mo, Riverside siya. Parang ganyan. Okay? So, there's a chance for you to con commit that error. Ayan. Riverside is wrong. Riverside is wrong siya. Wrong siya kasi based on dito sa audio natin, I was staying. Pag was, if it says, if the verb was was staying, currently, current address ba yung was staying? It's not. It's not the current address. And if you complete the sentence, I was staying at the Riverside Apartments on the same street, but, yung but, so it means to say there was a change. The apartment there was only available for six weeks. And also, ito pa, yung clue nyo pa. I had to find another one. So, clue nyo yan. I had to find another one. Meaning to say, yung Riverside, it's not the correct answer. So whatever it is that was mentioned, nakaligtaan nyo na. You skipped it already. So essential that you give your 100% attention on the audio recording at all times, at all instances. Kasi pag chikadora si ate, mamamali. Okay? There you go. Very good. Next, now let's move on to um, question number four. So for question number four, you're going to look what is and you have to, what is the answer that you are going to anticipate. There is it says here items stolen. So in here, uh, there are two kinds of items. The first one is the wallet containing approximately. So if it says containing approximately, more likely it's an answer that has something to do with amount of money. Why did I say amount of money? Because you have here the unit or the currency, pounds. Diba? Ito na, nag-compute na kayo. Who computed the answer here? Yung 250. Sino nag-compute ng 300 minus 50 pounds? Ganyan. O oh, diba? Si Ate Chikadora. Luis the Bubble mouth. Okay, sige. 250 is the correct answer. 250, pwede lang 250 because the pound sign is already given here. Dun sa form ninyo. If, again, the pound sign is not present there, then you can add the pound sign tito sa address. Ah, sa address. Sa answer. Okay. She mentioned 250, but then again, meron siyang I should think. I withdrew ganito from my account yesterday, but I did a bit of shopping. So, if for example, you skip yung 200, yung 250, it's okay. It's okay. As for this case, ah, okay lang siya. Why? Kasi meron siyang, um, you would, she withdrew 300, and then she did a bit of shopping. So, I must have already spent about 50 dollars of that. So, magma-minus lang kayo. But, if you heard 250, you don't need to um, compute anymore. So, yun lang. That computes peanut butter. Okay. Um, Rodeline Esteb has a question. Just to clarify, kanina kasi di present yung sign. Should we put the sign po? Ah, hindi ba present yung sign kanina? It's present. It's all present. Ah, natakpan. Okay, sorry. My mistake. Pag hindi present yung sign, um, hindi ko lang siya na-move. Pero pag hindi present yung sign, Yes, thank you for informing me about that. Um, that my mistake yun. Hindi, na, hindi ko na move sa PowerPoint. <laughs> okay, di present yung sign. So okay lang na may pound sign na siya. Lumabas bigla dito sa part na to. Thank you. Thank you for pointing that out. But okay na. Um, yun. So more or less, okay na kayo with the answer. See? You know na how to, when to use and when not to include yung mga pound signs. Okay. 
Okay, pag 250 lang yung answer, if we're going to base dun sa kanina ha, dun sa answer sheet kanina, if 250 lang, that would be wrong. But for this one, yun. Okay? Thank you, Rodeline. All right, next. Let's move on with the other one. Oh, question number five. Kung sa number, question number five, you're going to look also dun sa number six. So, ibig sabihin, your, your possible answer is a noun. Kasi dito, di ba, yung item stolen wallet. So, it's a noun. And then, another item, which is a noun also. And yung date of theft. So, yun yung i-anticipate mo. Two things you're going to anticipate first. Okay, wallet was already mentioned. But then, I realized my phone had gone as well. So, the answer is phone. Very good. Okay, phone is the answer. How about number six? Ano kaya yung answer sa number six? Nandito siya. <laughs> Nasa clue na eh. Anong answer niyo sa number six? Uh, the transcript says September the 10th. What was your answer? Very good. You can answer 10 September, um, but you can also answer September 10. September 10th also is a possible answer for this one. 10th September is also a correct answer for this one. Good. Good job, guys. 10 September, September 10th. So maraming possible answers for this one. As long as one word and or a number lang siya. September should be present. 10 should be present or number 10. Okay. Yung September 10th, as in September na word and 10th, is that a possible answer? September 10th, for example, I type like this. For example, I type September 10th. Correct ba ako? Am I getting a check mark for this one or no point? Not sure si Steve. Bakit not sure? Wrong. Wrong siya. Ano nga ulit yung word count natin? What is the required word count for this one? One word and or a number lang siya. So dito, how many words do you have? Two words na. September is one word. Tenth is one word. Oo. So yun. Wrong na yun. Wrong na siya. Okay? Na. Very good. Very good. You got the hang of it already. Let's move at Number seven. So number seven, read uh, read this one. So I have I didn't highlight pala. Possible time and place of theft. Possible time and place. So you're going to anticipate dito based on this location. Um, yan. So the answer is museum. The answer is museum. You're correct. The answer is museum. Very good. So, museum. Outside daw ng museum. Um, some, some answered uh, ang tawag nito? Uh, some answered a different word eh. Aside from museum. I don't know where you got the term, uh, where you got the other answer. Pero yun. Uh, museum yung correct answer natin dito. As we were leaving uh, means outside the museum. Yung 4 o'clock, giveaway yan. Yung mga time, 4 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 10 o'clock, dates, giveaway yan. Especially if it's present here in the form. Okay. Um, so, first off, let's ask, uh, let's answer first the question of Robin Wookie. Uh, Ma'am, in question number 4, there's also one word and number if we write pound. Pound. 250 pounds. Why it's not counted? Ah, why is it not counted? So you mean to say 250 pound um, as an answer? Since it's a currency, so we are required to use currency symbols if, if not, or 250 pounds probably. 250 pounds. It's better than pound 250. Okay, so there you go. Okay, next. Uh, 
Um, let's move on to question number eight. So, boys, it refers to, yung boys asked for the, asking us what the, or what time it was. So, time yung answer for the number, for number eight. Very good. Great job. Time. Okay. Lorente. Good job. Harleen. Sino pang nakakorek? Jem. Very good. Sino pa? Great job. Time yung answer for number eight. Very easy. And then number nine. Ano yung answer nyo sa nine? Blonde. Very good. Correct. So, blonde siya dito. There are still other words though that I highlighted here because for me, it it seems na these are my clues based on what I see. For example, here, yung t-shirt t-shirt with a picture of um, tiger. Ganyan, because in here, may tiger dito. So, if for example, the word tiger was mentioned, ah, okay, I would be more focused na because the answer might be the next word or the next sentence or in the next phrase, di ba? So, same goes for um, 12, 12 years old and slim. Ganyan, yung built. So that you can anticipate yung mga synonyms. 12, 12 years old, ano pa ba? Slim, slender, thin. So, in here, ayun, thin was the word that was used. And then, yung color of hair. Ah, okay, I've heard hair already. So, ito na siya, blonde. Blonde. Okay, very good, guys. Correct. Blonde. Blonde can be spelled as blonde, B-L-O-N-D. It can also be spelled as B-L-O-N-D-E. So it can also be spelled like that. Yes, with an E is also correct. All right. Thank you, thank you. How about your number 10? Can you see? Can I see your answer for number 10? Can you type it? Type your answers in the chat box. Yo, and that's the exciting part. Kasi 10 digits siya. That's the challenging one. Ten, it's a 10 digit number. Okay. 87954-82361. Okay, I think nobody got the wrong answer for this one. I think everybody was correct. Eight seven nine five four eight two three six one. Wala naman nagkamale, de ba? Even though it's a ten digit number, but mind you guys, there are some instances wherein if you're given digits, so usually by threes, um, by three sila na po pronounce. But in some instances, it's pronounced direct. Uh, ng ano one straight, um, one straight pronunciation 8795482361 or sometimes 8795482361 ganun so it depends it depends upon the audio or the recording very easy kapag ano may um syllabications siya or or um ano yun parang divisions for this one okay so there you go how many got 10 for this one Ay, taray, perfect. So, easy nga siya. Easy nga siya. O, see? So, now, um, since you got 10 for this one, um, yung score nyo na, wait, let me check at the score, ha? For the listening test, if, for example, you got a 10 for this one, you are already assured of um, assured ka na ng 4. Okay? Eh, easy pa yung ano, yung part 2. Easy pa. So, makaka-10 ka ulit. So, 20. So, at least, if for example, na perfect mo na, part 1, you got a perfect score, or part 2, you got a perfect score for this one, more or less, you already have something to bank on as you pursue yung target score ninyo. If you say that your target score is, um, if your target score Wait lang. If your target score is, let's say, 6.5. So, your score should be not lower than 26 points or 26 correct answers, yung raw score ninyo. Um, if your score is 7, yung target, not lower than 30, yung correct answers. Diba? So, very easy na lang. So, that's why, for me, it's essential. Even if very easy lang yung part 1 and part 2, um, I always... Um, 
challenge myself to get a perfect score for part 1 and part 2. Kasi the more difficult questions appear in part 3 and then the part 4. Most especially yung part 4. Uh, most especially yung part 4. Kasi yun yung isang round, isang ano na, one um, straight na audio, no pauses in between. So, there you go. Ang daming 10. Perfect 10. Bonus yan if may ganyan. <laughs> okay, so yun. That's it for today's session. So, very easy lang siya. I hope that the techniques that I showed you, um, yung identifying the keywords and then anticipating the answers, these are not only applicable for um, the form um, or notes kinds of questions, but also applicable din siya in other types of questions as well. Yung mga gap fill questions in general, yung gap fill questions, also applicable din for table, applicable also for short question answers, yung mga ganyan. Okay, any questions? So now, now's the time for us to answer questions. More, ma'am. Wala na ako na-prepare. No more na ako eh. No more slides na. And it's already 10.45. Sige, what else? Questions na lang. I would entertain questions. Ah, very good. Yung mga naka-9 over 10 din, okay lang. For those who were not able to get the perfect score, um, can you please type ano yung wrong, yung number na wrong kayo? And then, what did you write? Kunyari, number 10. Tapos mali kayo. Or number um, number 2, your answer was, instead of furniture, chair yung sagot nyo. Ano ba yung answer ninyo? So that we can check. I'm looking at the chat box for questions. Eh. I think I've answered already. Most of the questions. Okay. So, ayan. So, we have a question. From Richmond um, of IN, IFNG. Pen lang needed sa exam, madam. Okay, for the exam, if you're going to take paper delivered test, you can bring your own pencil, yung Mongol number two. Pare, Mongol number two because that is um, a good guy, a good quality pencil. But they can also provide pencil for you. For me lang para sure na dal dala ko na lahat. Pencil. Paper they will be providing me. For sure sa number three, marami mali. Number three, really? Marami mali sa number three. Ayan. Oo. Oh, oh. Number three. Number three. What did you answer dun sa number three? King Street. Okay. Sige, balikan natin. King Street Apartments. Ayan. Kaso kasi may apartments siya eh. The word apartments is the cue. Um, okay, peanut butter said. <laughs> passport, number five daw. Sinugot niya passport. Because dun sa number five, diba, the word passport was mentioned. Actually, the word passport was mentioned. Ayun o, oh, nasa na yun? Um, Here. Ayun, pwede, ito pa yung pwedeng ma-confuse kayo. Keys to my rental car or keys. Ayan, yung answer na yan, keys. I think not there eh. Dito nyo siya makikita. Ayun, dito. Na-mention si passport. For question, before the answer for question number four. That's why you were confused. Okay. Um let's discuss yung passport. For the one who answered passport, why what will make us realize na hindi correct yung passport? When we look at this phrase or when we look at the sentence, well unfortunately, I don't keep my credit cards in that wallet. So that wallet ibig sabihin it's referring to what was lost. So wallet wasn't there, this was already mentioned and you've answered it already, wallet tapos containing ganyan so i keep them with my ano yung them ano yung them the them refers to your credit cards correct so the them refers to your credit cards i keep them with my passport in an inside compartment in my backpack the credit cards were not lost 
So in the same way, since your credit cards and your passports are together, hindi sila nawala pareho. Gets po? Yun. Okay? King Street yung sagot. Yan. Alright. So there. Um, sharpener, do not bring sharpener. If ever you would be bringing pencils, um, bring several sharpened pencils. Kasi, why? Especially especially for listening, you don't need to sharpen while you are while the audio is playing. Kasi yung focus ninyo mahahati siya. It wouldn't be 100% focus on the audio. Um, same goes for ano, same goes for reading, 'di ba? Yung focus niyo then it needs to be 100% as you are doing the reading. Kasi you need the momentum for the reading. So you don't need to sharpen, sharpen, sharpen any unnecessary movement that would hinder you from having complete focus and complete attention on the IELTS exam. Do not um do it. So lahat ng pencils niyo dapat sharpened na siya. Um what else? Richmond has a question. Um, usually po ba yung clear and medyo loud na sound ng word, yun yung sagot? Nope. Not really clear and medyo loud. Um, sometimes, there are instances na in if they spell out a certain, um, let's say, surname or a certain place, pero that's not the answer. So sometimes that's not the answer. Pero if, for example, you heard na something is being spelled out, sulat nyo na lang siya dun sa, you have to just write it on your... Um, sketch paper. Para what if yun pala yung possible answer sa next number. So, at least you have it. Okay? If computer delivered, pwede po ba siya iparemark? Unlike sa written, baka hindi lang nabasa masyado. Um, on both instances, you can have it remarked. Although, since Um, since this one kasi, um, since listening and reading are objective tests wherein you have possible correct answers, may answer kina kasi dito, ba? Diba? So, less likely that you would have higher points for reading and for um, listening for this one. So, usually, ang pinapa ano natin, um, remark natin would be for listen, uh, for speaking and for writing kasi sila yung subjective. Credit cards, they don't emphasize the answer. Oh, they don't emphasize the answer. There. So, yun. I hope there was um, a rationale why passport is not the answer. What else? Ano pa? Yung King Street, na-realize na natin lahat. <laughs> Bakit hindi King Street yung answer? Kasi the word apartments is present dito. Okay? So, yan. Street is not mentioned here, eh. Walang word na street dito sa form ninyo. There was no word mention of the word street. So, if it's King Street, not the correct answer. Okay? So, that's it. It's already 10.52. So, again, let me just share with you guys um, the books that we have with 9.09. I'm looking at the um, I'm looking at the link on Amazon because I know most of you are located in the Middle East. So, I'm finding the Amazon link for this one. I, I think I'll just be sending it sa chat box. So, you can uh, check yung sa chat box for the Amazon books. Alright. So, there you go. I hope I've answered all corrections, uh, all questions already. Okay na, no? Okay. So, guys, thank you so much for sharing your time with me tonight. I hope you learned a lot. So, and again, um, I hope that for all sessions that we have with you um, from 9.09er, you will also be as participant as participant as participative as you are right now. Thank you so much. And ano ba? Please always take care wherever you are in the world. Enjoy. Um, and always remember that um, prayers count and prayers matter. In as much as you are um, preparing, yung prayers nyo is part of the preparation as well. Okay? So that's it. Great job, everyone. Um, hopefully, yung 10 nyo ngayon will be carried over dun sa actual listening exam na nyo. Sana 10 din kayo. Uh, or... 
claim natin, di ba? Why not 9.0, di ba? Niner. Okay, that's it. Thank you so much. God bless you, everyone. Stay safe. So, I'll be logging up na. Thank you, thank you. Good night.